The next section of this lecture concerns electrolytes. Aqueous solutions can form electrolytes or non-electrolytes. Electrolytes are substances whose aqueous solutions conduct electricity. Non-electrolytes do not conduct electricity. One way to check for electrolytes is using what's known as the light bulb test. I have some links in Moodle for the demonstration of this apparatus by Dr. Greg Nyhart, who is also an NC State professor. So please watch those for more clarification. The apparatus is plugged into the wall and is generating an electric current. We will have a negative electrode and a positive electrode, which are wires dipped into our solution. If ions flow in the solution, we will have completed the electric circuit such that the light bulb will light. Cations will migrate to the negative electrode because opposite charges attract, and anions will migrate to the positive electrode. This means that aqueous solutions that are electrolytes need to have cations and anions in them. So ions conduct electricity, and molecules do not. How do we determine if a compound is an electrolyte or non-electrolyte? We think about placing it in water and what will happen. If the compound's covalent bonds remain attached to one another, then no ions form. If no ions form, we have a non-electrolyte. So non-electrolytes do not conduct electricity because they do not form ions when dissolving in solution. Sugar is soluble in water, but the covalent bonds remain, so it is a non-electrolyte. Caffeine, also soluble in water, again the covalent bonds remain, so it is a non-electrolyte. Chlorine, not particularly soluble in water, the little that does remains bonded, so again a molecule and a non-electrolyte. How do we identify electrolytes? Place them in water and the bond separates into an anion and a cation. So how many ions do you see? Everything that we placed in solution formed ions. So this is an electrolyte. Electrolytes conduct electricity, and when they dissolve, they form ions. Electrolytes are soluble ionic compounds, so we can see that magnesium sulfate, when it dissolves, makes a cation and an anion. To determine which ones are soluble, we'll get to that in the next section of this lecture. Strong acids are also strong electrolytes. For right now, I have a list of six strong acids for you to memorize. But don't worry, by the time you get to test four, you're going to be given an acid-base table that will help you with this. For the short term, please recognize that HCl, HBr, HI, nitric acid, perchloric acid, and sulfuric acid are all strong electrolytes. When placed in water, they form the cation hydronium and the anion, which is the conjugate base. So let's try a little predictive exercise to determine whether the following are electrolytes or non-electrolytes. Electrolytes will be ionic materials and strong acids. Non-electrolytes will be molecular materials. So copper sulfate. Hopefully you recognize this as an ionic material and therefore an electrolyte. The next one is isopropanol. This is a molecular compound and a non-electrolyte. I need to address alcohols because sometimes students are a little confused when they see that OH because they think about hydroxide. If you were to think this was an ionic compound, these are the two materials that it would break into, the cation and the anion. The hydroxide has a stable Lewis structure with octets and duets and is an anion that we know. What about the cation? 
Is this any stable cation that you know of, where carbon has a positive charge and six electrons around it? Mm, no. So this does not happen. Isopropanol is a molecular compound and a non-electrolyte. How about the next material? Hopefully you recognize that as ammonium chloride, the ionic compound, which is soluble, and an electrolyte. How about D? That is a strong acid, that is perchloric acid, so when we dissolve that in water, that will make hydronium and the perchlorate ion. This is an electrolyte. How about sodium hydroxide? This is an ionic compound. When it dissolves, it makes the sodium ion, which is stable and isoelectronic with a noble gas, and the hydroxide anion, which we know is also stable. So I trust you see the difference between D, isopropanol, and E, sodium hydroxide. If you can break apart into two stable pieces, cation and anion, you're an ionic compound and an electrolyte. Here are your student questions. Determine if the first compound, potassium sulfate, is an electrolyte, and if the second compound, methanol, is an electrolyte. I've left you a hint for methanol to think about whether or not it breaks into two stable pieces, cation and anion. How about the next two compounds? Ammonium acetate and hydrochloric acid.